What's up guys, more Medic One. Hey, check these things out. I just got back from the auction house and they had these two horizontal shaft push mowers for 10 bucks. I went ahead and bought them, figured I could make one out of two and scrap the rest. But this is the first time I've ever seen a horizontal shaft push mower. Check that out. How in the world does it work? This one right here is just about brand new. I don't know the story on these, but he had about five or six of these mowers for sale and I got the ones that didn't. But from what it looks like, it's just got a horizontal shaft maybe with a 90 degree gearbox. But how does it go from here to turn the blade? Let's get this thing flipped over and see how this thing works. So when you flip it on the side and you can turn the blade, you can also tell that it's turning the motor at the same time. Whoa, way overzealous there, Mr. Medic. You can see it turning the flywheel back in there. But this one, it's got a bent shaft as you can tell it's not bad bad but it's bad enough to where it was scraping the concrete when it was running and he said it vibrated So what I plan on doing is unbolting the front end on this one with the bench shaft and bolting the front end on this one where this one's all wompy jawed. These things are just absolutely garbage. I'm gonna take the rear wheel off of that one and put over here. Guys, I went ahead and put them both on the bench. I'm kind of curious to see uh, why the shaft is bent on this one. As you can tell, it's just like a uh, uh, horizontal engine. The shaft comes out the side there, makes a 90 and goes down, and somehow makes another 90 so that it can spin the blade in the middle. It looks way over-engineered, but it might be you know pretty decent, I don't know. So let's go underneath this thing and see how this thing works. This is the first time I've ever seen one, first time I've ever put a wrench on one. Obviously, the, they have sold the poo-poo out of these because that's all I see people mowing with nowadays, especially where I live. It may be different where you live. Get this dude flipped over onto its side. As you can tell, that one's got a busted wheel too. Just about all of them have broken, broken wheels. I don't know what is going on. This one's got a good one. But you can get wheels at Herber Freight super cheap. Kind of got you out of frame there for a second, didn't I? So what we're gonna do, figure out why in the world? This is the one. No, that shaft is not bent. I don't know what. Something was going on with it to where the seller was saying that the shaft was bent, but I'm not seeing it. Maybe it was the other one. Yeah, I checked the other one. It's not bent. Something's going on with it. Though. It's a little bit off. And it may just be the blade, I don't know. I mean, but look at it, it hadn't cut grass. 
if it has cut any grass, it, <laughs> it ain't been much. But anyway, I want to get this blade off. I want to get this cover off. I'm curious as all get out how this, how this works. Blade bolt is a 13 mil. Got a blade adapter. To get this cover off, it looks like it's just a 12 mil. We've got a couple of those, one here. One, one there, and that's a 10. I hate it whenever they mix and match hardware. Just use all the same size hardware. belt driven makes complete sense now it's got a little serpentine belt to drive I'm assuming a bearing got a little bearing carrier right here So basically, here's your engine, and here's your 90 degree gearbox, and the shaft coming down comes through the deck. This is the drive pulley, and this is gonna be just an idler, and this is going to be, a, like I said, a bearing carrier here, one, two, three, four. To get this bearing out, looks like you would have to remove the engine. I'm gonna get your eye level with this pulley and we're gonna pull it and see if it's bent. This is one thing I like about a camera. You can set it up, make your video, and then review the video to see if it's bent, especially if you don't have anybody else to watch for you. I'm gonna take the blade and blade adapter off of this one. So they even mark it from the factory to see if you've taken the, <laughs> the blade off of it yet. I'm gonna take this blade adapter and this blade and put it on this one over here just to see if we can eliminate some of that blade wobble. I think we've got an issue with the blade or the adapter. This one has a pretty decent wheel. I'm gonna swap it out for this one that's broke somebody must have really abused the poo out of this to break this wheel it's not a, it's not a bad little wheel it's got ball bearings it's just a 13 mil all right so the tag says motor loose broken wheel. So I I don't know what they mean by motor loose. I tightened up the motor. It put my wrench on the bolts. They're not loose at all. But if you can tell, there ain't a drop of oil in this little hussy. I wonder, maybe they bought this brand new. Didn't, uh, you know, put any oil in it, cranked it up, and maybe we shelled the motor out. Only way to find out is to put some oil in it and let's see if it'll crank up. And she's all the way full now. It held a full 20 ounces of oil. So she was dry. And I pulled the gas cap off and this thing has got some foul smelling stuff, buddy. It's bone dry too. Yeah, she's quite stinky. Let's go ahead and put a little gas in it though. 
and just see if it'll pop off. Banging like crazy. What in the world? Man, when this thing cranks up, it's knocking this butt off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the belt and then we'll recrank it and see if the noise goes away. The easiest way to get this belt off would be to just remove or loosen up the idler. Boy, ain't that just a rinky-dink spring right there. Come on off of there. That is a definitely a tight fit. Go ahead and remove this out of our way. So the only thing that we should have is the engine running. I don't want to lose that spring, so I got to take it out. That blade bearing. Now that I could just spin it by hand. Can't really tell. It looks like it might be a little wompy. Of course, that might just be in the manufacturing of it. All right, no blade turning. No belt.
that was me releasing the bell off and on. This thing got a definite knock. I want, makes me wonder if it's in the gearbox right here. So I don't know. Let's, let's tear it apart. To get this engine off, we're gonna have to remove the kill cable. And as you can tell, that sucker is buried. Really can't get a pair of needle nose in there to get that cable off. But guys, do I have an awesome tool for you? This is the 2.0 lawnmower cable removing tool from BS Small Engines, Brandon Buckler. Check him out. I'm going to put his, uh, his information in the uh, description and in the comments to where you guys can get your very own tool, just like this here. The 2.0 has just a little bit longer snout. Perfect for this application right here. I'm gonna slide this tool right in place. You'll hear it click in. I'll be in your way just for a second here, I think. Maybe not. Push the tool over the, the little clips and pull that cable right out of there. Man, is that easy or what? Go ahead and remove the drive pulley. Just a 12 millimeter. Kind of makes me wonder if that noise could be right here on this drive system. See how that's loose? That very well could be banging. Every time that engine fires, it's making that rattling noise. And to me, honestly, the crankshaft or the, the gearbox shaft extends past this pulley and when you tighten it up, you're not tightening anything. You're just tightening it up onto the shaft, but there's no, uh, to me, it looks like it needs to be a spacer or something put behind it. And the only thing they have is a little old bitty snap ring that doesn't look like it's in place. Look at that. What if I just found the problem right here on this snap ring? Let's get that sucker off, clean this groove, and see what we can come up with. That still doesn't make sense as to why it's still wanting to bang when you crank it up. It's really clacking pretty hard. You can tell that key's been banging. See how it's wore out on the edge? You guys, or if you're looking for a good set of snap ring pliers, I lost the label on that thing and I called my Cornwell dealer and I said, what was the number of that snap ring plier you sold me? And he told me it was an ML625R, so I went ahead and wrote that on the box so I'd never forget. But this set of snap ring pliers has lasted and lasted. I have not had one single problem out of these right here. You can tell I got some transmission parts down in there from when I did a tranny on a Chevy Blazer once. Let's see if this one's gonna do it. I don't know how well that's gonna zoom for us. to get the smaller pair. So if I get this in there, man, this is a rinky dink snap ring.
It's in the groove. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that that keyway is loosey goosey. Try putting it in the pulley first. Still, we're protruding past this pulley, so when you tighten the bolt, that's going to be loose. I don't know, guys. Hey, we've come this far. If you've enjoyed what we've been doing so far, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and smash that like button so that YouTube knows that I'm doing a good job. Uh, hey, in the comments, is this thing worth fixing? We may not even need a part. But if it does need a part, the cost to fix it will probably far outweigh the what it's worth. But in the comments, do you, you know, should we go ahead and tear this thing down just to take a look? I think I will. But we're already down this far. We might as well just take the motor off. Once I removed that blade adapter, and a while ago I was spinning it, and it just seemed like it might have been a little wonky, but when I spin it without the bolt, it's it's straight. Ain't nothing wonky about that. Four bolts. Let's see if we can't wiggle this engine off of this frame. Looks like I'm gonna <laughs> take my snap ring off on the other side and be right back. There we go. And you can see the blade bearing right underneath the engine I was wondering how close that came to the bottom of the engine and it's pretty dead gum close frames not busted in any way not cracked around where the engine mounts here she is off the mower you can tell it's got a bearing here but but no seal so i wonder if this little gearbox is uh got oil in it or you just put grease in it every now and then and who knows i'm gonna take this darn daggone thing apart and see because i have a feeling our issue is gonna be in here it's got to be 12 millimeters. Four longs and two shorts. Look at there, you could take that thing and mount it that way. <laughs> you could drive a like for a boat or something that'd be kind of cool but it won't just come right up off of here so i'm thinking maybe the can uh there must be a gear or something that's got us caught Let's see if we can't separate these halves right here
Yep, just a little bit of grease. And look how dry that gear is. See if we can't pop this up. Here's why we can't remove it. You have to get this bolt or nut out of the way. It goes into the end of the actual crank of the engine. And that should be able to pull up now. Little stubby guy, isn't it? That key just happened to fall right in there. Really couldn't use this engine for anything, could you? Look at that. Alrighty, guys. So I have found the issue with all the banging, clanking when it's running. Check this out. This drive gear has completely banged out look at the keyway how it's dished out and it has absolutely destroyed the crankshaft not a good design in my opinion this is a pretty much a catastrophic failure and it happened pretty much right out of the box. I, it's, if it mowed much grass, it didn't mow much at all. But the theory behind helical cut gears like this, whenever this thing is running and you have a load here and the gears are spinning, it's wanting to push down. It's wanting, these gears are wanting to repel each other when they're under a load. And what's happened is that's exactly what this has done. It has just chattered out, pressed down on the crankshaft and keyway, and has just absolutely destroyed itself. Now I'm curious to see if it'll crank up without anything. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna flip this thing on its, uh, on its feet and we're gonna bypass the kill switch right here and we're gonna see if it'll crank up. All right, I stuck it on a piece of cardboard keep it from vibrating all over my bench. fix this right it would need a crank and new gear uh i probably i'll look up the parts and i'll keep you guys posted but i'm probably not going to fix this uh, you could probably repower this with a predator predator engine from harbor freight if you felt like it you just have to be sure you get the crank dimensions right and uh man i don't know it's just ain't gonna be worth fixing, I do believe. All righty, guys. Hey, if this content helped you out, give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And while you're there doing that, go ahead and click that bell to get all my new content. Y'all have a good rest of your weekend. Mormonic one.